Hello, I'm Aki X Toy Cat, and we should all agree that deep dark trading, deep dark ores, and a birch forest that looks like this would significantly improve Minecraft. Well, good news for you, the 1.19 wild update is coming out this year, and although I've done a whole video talking about everything confirmed so far for 2022, I'll leave that linked in the description in case you're curious, but today I wanted to talk about things that I would like to see added, but haven't yet been confirmed. I will be taking a look at the official Minecraft suggestion site to see features Mojang is most likely to have looked at, but we will be entering the speculation zone in this video because, of course, none of these things have happened yet. With that said, though, let's talk about what could improve Minecraft in 2022. If you'd like to improve my year, then you can, of course, subscribe to the channel. We're getting closer and closer to 2 million, but let's talk first about the Deep Dark because this is our biggest mystery in Minecraft. As you can see, we have seen the Warden behavior. We've seen him in various different iterations from this kind of weird cave in the 2020 demo, and then we saw the Deep Dark City in the 2020 one demo with wardens spawning within them. Uh, so we're getting a better idea for what the deep dark looks like every single day. However, we still don't really know what the reason for going there is. Of course, you and I are going to be going to the deep dark because we're oh so curious, but what if there were reasons better than just your curiosity? And that's where the deep dark trader comes in. A mysterious hooded figure who lives in the deep dark and who functions kind of like a reverse wandering trader. Instead of buying your overworld items in exchange for emeralds, maybe he could buy your rarer, never, and deep dark items in exchange for some things that could really help you out with the warden. This could be as simple as food and light, which are of course very hard to find when you're that deep underground, uh, but also it could be things like potions, I think this is a great idea by itself, but as well as a deep dark trader, what about a deep dark mineshaft? This could be a variant of the mineshaft that only spawns in the deep dark, just like how mineshafts that spawn in mesa biomes use, I think it's dark oak wood, you could have these deep dark mineshafts use the brand new mangrove wood uh, to generate into these places, just to give the deep dark more of a unique vibe. You could also give them slightly different loot tables or slightly different spawn rates, I don't really care about how they do it, I just know that having another new structure would be really cool because we know about the deep dark city but what about deep dark variants of existing structures the one that i think really takes the cake for what they need in the deep dark though has to be the deep dark ore and this is an official feedback post where they say recently mojang announced the new deep dark biome that would be integrated into the caves and cliffs update well about that one anyway we'll continue because they suggest that there should be an ore that is rarely found in the cave walls of the deep dark the ore would take longer to be mined than an obsidian, so it's a super high-end ore, it's hard to mine, but the other reason is that the ore will intermittently admit a loud sound when being mined. The ore will do this at least five times during the mining process, which will make mining this ore extremely scary, as a warden could hear the ore and rush after you at any moment. This is a really fun idea to me, because right now, the only reason you're ever going to go near the warden naturally is to maybe go in those chests and try and find that new, mysterious item we don't know too much about. What if instead Instead of there being a new mysterious item, or perhaps even better, as well as there being a new mysterious item, what if there was a new type of ore that you could mine in these walls? The name this person gave it was Skulkium, because obviously all the things around are called Skulk, uh, and this is a fun idea by itself that like, okay, you can collect Skulkium ore, and then eventually you can combine those Skulkium ores together to make a Skulkium block. Could look really cool, could be kind of like how we've got chiseled versions of other blocks, that could be a really fun ore block, but what if we go a step above that, because their second suggestion is what if you could take this Skulkium and you could smelt it and turn it into tool slash armor. And although I think the idea of deep dark tools and armor is a really fun one, I do think it's a bit OP. I mean, he even suggests that, yeah, it's a bit too much like diamonds and they need to give it something more unique. And their idea is having a brand new eternal enchantment, which means that you won't lose your armor when you die, you just lose the enchantments on it, which is a fun enough one, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's pretty similar to the curses that we have. So my way that I would slightly alter this idea is what if you could use it to make either a better enchantment table, I've always felt like we should have an enchantment table that has a pre-built-in supply of lapis, just like how the brewing stands have blaze rod slots uh, that can automatically use those as you need those. What if instead we had a brand new enchantment table, or you could just go something even simpler. What if it's only craftable into boots, and those boots can be made into silent boots so you can run around the deep dark without fear of the warden? I think there's lots of great ideas you could do with a skulking ore. Obviously, this is just a surface level one, but I think the most important thing is having some mining-based 
reason to go to a underground cave biome would of course improve the value of mining in Minecraft. I'm always going to be a strong advocate for making mining underground better because I think that Minecraft should be just as much about mining as it is about crafting. There's all sorts of other great ideas right here such as deep dark oceans and I think that would be so cool. What if we did have amazingly deep oceans that could go basically underground and could maybe be a sign of the deep dark below them? Again, I think more indicating of what's below the surface from above the surface is something that gives more information to players who know it's there and can also just be a fun source of exploration. But, uh, you know, for now we'll leave the deep dark behind because we can talk about what we want in the deep dark all day every day. Okay, you know what that day is today. What if we made the deep dark cities spawn below bedrock so you had to specifically look for the openings? And what if we made the deep dark cities uh, something so hard that any player that goes there on their first day comes back and realizes what a real terror this is? What if there were deep dark owls that could look around the deep dark area and so you had to watch out for those because they could relay their vision information into sound information, which of course you don't want when you're in a sound based area. There's so many fun ideas that I, I don't even know how they're gonna work out how to include uh, them in the deep dark and how to work this out. But that's why I'm so excited about 1.19 underground. But of course, this isn't just an underground update. In fact, the big impetus of the wild update is above the surface. So how about instead first we talk about the things we know they are updating. We know they're updating the swamp biome already. They are adding the mangrove. They are adding the mud. They're adding all these different features to make the swamp more interesting. But what if while they're updating the swamp anyway and they're playing around the entire code for the biome, what if they did something the community has felt has been overdue since the village and pillage update. That's right, they added eight types of villages to that update and there's a lot of different villages in the village so this was no small undertaking but they only added six unique types of villages and by added I mean they took the six existing villages that were all the same and made them unique. It really was cool to see how every biome had a different feel because of these brand new villages. However, you could never find a swamp or a jungle village despite there being swamp and jungle villages. What if we could use this as an update opportunity to make the swamp village. This is a pretty wild time to do that in my opinion and in case you're curious as what that could look like, a friend of mine, Green, has actually made this rendition of what it could look like. I think he did a pretty good job of making it realistically what Mojang might try to add. However, what I think is even more interesting is now we have a specific swamp type wood, the mangrove wood, and we also have the brand new mud blocks and mud bricks coming. I just think that now is a good time to maybe make even better swamp villages. How could that look? I don't even know, but I feel like now is definitely the time. Speaking of things that now is the time for, birch forests. I feel like Minecraft is doing a really interesting thing where every single update they add ambient mobs uh, to the game and I, I I think I have my criticisms of basically useless mobs. I think they're doing a better and better job at making these useless mobs into near useless mobs, which, you know, I think there's a great argument that maybe everything in Minecraft doesn't need a purpose and that I'm thinking into it too much. And so if that's the case, what if we add an ambient mob to the birch forest? I love from that post Australia, the idea of having deer in here, and I also feel as though making the birch forest really stand out compared to the regular forest is a great idea. All these ambient decorations are wonderful. I really can't wait to see what they add here. Personally, I don't have many great ideas for the birch forest. Instead, my other ideas revolve around, okay, now we know that this is the wild update. They're updating a couple of biomes in the overworld, and they're updating the underground. What if we use this as an opportunity to make a touch-up to a few other biomes? I mean, it's clear that Mojang is committed to just changing the world generation every update for a while now, which is fine. They're making it better and better and better. And so if that's the case, what if we take the dark oak forest, the roof forest, and we make it somewhere that bears can spawn? We already have bears inside of Minecraft. It's just the only bears that exist are polar bears. And I'm always terrified. I watch videos of bears and it's the reminder that, you know, Americans are always complaining about spiders in Australia. Like, oh, I'll never go to Australia. Have you guys heard about the spiders there? That's genuinely why most people say they're not going to Australia if they're in America. Have you seen bears? Have you seen that like unlike spiders which are just terrifying and I don't get me wrong don't like spiders especially poisonous ones but I watched this video of a guy he's on a bike and it's like huh why is he going uphill it's real strange and then he picks up his bike and there's a bear and then as much as he's waving his bike the bear doesn't care and there's like literally and then it, it comes back and he the, the bear doesn't care it's like there's like five seconds between this biker losing his life and death and it's just a reminder that like yeah that's real life I don't like that 
However, shouldn't we have more scary passive mobs in Minecraft? Again, if we're going for these dumb every update, we need to have a passive mob that does next to nothing. What if the passive mob actually murdered you while you're in the woods? It would add an extra fear to the dark oak forest and would also, uh, you know, maybe have some interaction with the bees. I'm not saying I know how to add it. I'm just saying whenever I see bears in Minecraft, I'm like, we already have the bear mob. We might as well also have the brown and black variants of it. Like how we have different colored horses or llamas or rabbits or uh, foxes or now frogs um, just saying, makes sense to eventually add the same for bears. While we're just talking about a wish list anyway, I feel as though this should be a year of two updates. I think that Minecraft got into a really good pattern of one big update every single year, but they always expressed interest in doing two. With 1.15 and 1.14, they kind of did that, except the second update, the Buzzy Bees update, didn't do too well. And then with the Caves and Cliffs update, by cutting the update in half, they technically released two updates last year. What if this is the first year we get two decently sized, fully fledged Minecraft updates. The first one has the warden, the swamps, and the birch forest updates, and these other small little features they've mentioned. And then the second one could be other biomes. You know, we go for the dark forest, we go for the savannah biome, we go for maybe even the combat update as a part of that, because yes, I want to see combat updated, and not because I want to see combat be changed. I mean, partially that too. Don't get me wrong. I would love to see what fighting the warden would be like with the new combat system. That is just a truth. However, what I really want to see is proper parity of about how that offhand slot works. I wanna see stackable potions. I wanna see snowballs that go up to 64. There's so many tiny changes that they need to make. And I think that waiting years and years and years for the combat update, that's no good. And just overall, I feel as though having a combat update where we get some proper parity between Java and bedrock fighting mechanics might be a good idea. I don't care what system they implement at this point. All I care about is that eventually I can learn to use this new combat and I don't have to keep thinking like, okay, they're gonna change the entire combat system soon. Also, while we're wishing anyway, the last combat update, 1.9, the really controversial update, also changed up the end islands. In fact, it added the end islands for the first time, made the end dimension a fully fledged one. So wouldn't it be cool if while we're updating the combat anyway for the 1.20 update, what if we also uh, made it so the end islands were significantly updated too? There were more reasons to go out there. There were different end biomes, if you will. I think it's a really good idea and I could talk forever about what I want to see in 1.20, but I think the most most important thing to say right here is I really hope this is the year they finally do pull off a 1.19 and a 1.20. Obviously, what I actually imagine is we'll get one really big 1.19 and then they'll start work on 1.20 to release in 2023. But given that we're finally on the way out of COVID, and by that, I, I for, the, for the pedants in the comments, no, I don't mean we're like COVID's magically going away. I mean, we've, we've got better strategies as humans to deal with it, or at the very least, we care less about it, which it's it's funny actually when you think about it, they're like, you know what? The, the the amount this virus affects us is not based on how much it affects us. It's based on how much we care about affecting us, which is true for so many causes of death. I mean, the amount of like <laughs> automobile accidents we have every year, but we don't obviously call for like, you know, it could be really safe if we all switch to public transport. Well, you know, we, we don't have these big debates and you know what, maybe we should. But my point with this video is just to say, since I'm allowed to just magically focus on what I want and ignore the downsides of what I want, I feel as though Minecraft having a two update year and 1.19 being the amazing Caves and Cliffs part 3, adding some new ores and some new reasons to go down, as well as updating the overworld, and then 1.20, finishing that up a little bit, but also changing the combat. That is what I hope for most. And you know what? Also, you know how the Aether map that came out in the marketplace just stole an idea from King B Dogs, an actual Minecraft developer who worked on the Aether? You know what? Maybe make it so they can't steal your idea and put it in Minecraft. Add the Aether dimension to Minecraft. I don't care if it's just an April Fool's joke. I don't care if it's like a longer term idea that they have to slowly piece together. I would love to see a new dimension and I feel like if I'm allowed to wish for anything this year, if this is like a, you know, a genie magic lamp, then the first thing I'm wishing for is that my wishes don't use up the free wishes in the lamp. Boom, there we go. Infinite, uh, you know, god hack activated. The second thing I'm wishing for is a private McDonald's in place of my current kitchen. I mean, who even uses a kitchen? Have you ever seen a sink? What does it even do? I hear water comes out of there. Doesn't water come out everywhere else in the house? No, you need a McDonald's in your kitchen. And then the third thing I'm wishing for is I'm wishing for a new dimension. And although they've said they won't add a new dimension until they've updated the three existing dimensions well enough, you know what? My parents said they would stay together and look how that went. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then like, favorite, subscribe. I always say to favorite at the end of videos, I don't think favoriting is a feature on YouTube anymore. I think you can make a favorites playlist. You know what? Put me in your favorites playlist. It makes gives me no benefit, but like, it lets me know you care. Or if you want to do something that actually helps, obviously subscribing to the notifications turned on 
is the best way to see more videos and to see all of these features become reality because if we all believe together, it totally comes true. Trust me, that's how it works. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.